Comet, The Cult of Steel, Chapter 2, New Arrivals and Tearful Goodbyes Applejack stirred at the sound of the rooster's crow entering her bedroom's window. With a yawn, she sat up and rubbed her eyes as she looked to see the figure of her big brother standing at the foot of her bed. Ah, <sighs> good morning, Big Mac. What are y'all doing in my room? She asked, puzzled. Pa told me to come and get you, he answered. Said we're having a family meeting in the nursery. A family meeting? Uh, what about? Pa said something about it having to do with the shooting star that crashed into the orchard last night. In an instant, Applejack wiped the remaining sleep out of her eyes and threw off her sheets following her older brother to the nursery next to her parents' room. Ma, what's going on? Applejack asked as she entered the nursery. To her surprise, her parents are standing over the crib in the center of the room while her grandmother sat in a rocking chair in the corner. It's good to see that you're finally up, Pear Butter replied. Now, the reason your pa and I called this family meeting is on the count of something landing in the orchard last night. Applejack's eyes lit up with excitement at the mention of the fallen star. Wh well, where is it, Ma? Can, can we see it? Bright Mac looked at his daughter and smiled before he picked up her by the scruff of her neck and held her over the crib. Well, you're looking at a sugar cube, he said. Lying in the crib was a small white colt with a snow-white coat and a tuft of a steel-gray mane on his forehead. The little filly could hardly believe her ears. What? What are y'all talking about? I, I thought you said it was a shooting star. Bright Mac smiled and set her down onto the floor. Bright Mac, please take a seat. We've got much to discuss, Pear Butter said as she ushered her daughter over to the couch. She took in a deep breath as Applejack sat next to her brother. So, y'all know how some foals are found in baskets, son? Well, after your pa and I sent you both to bed, we went out into the orchard to see what the damage was. When we got there, we found, well, it's hard to describe. Pear Butter ran a hoof through her mane as she tried to think of the right words to say. Ah. Uh, I guess there's no other way to say it. It looked like some kind of rocket ship or something. Applejack's eyes widened with excitement at the mention of a rocket ship. She was a pretty good teller if some pony was lying for her age, and it wasn't like her parents to go around telling tall tales. A glance around the living room showed that the rest of the family echoed her astonishment. Big Mac was left even more speechless than usual, not even being able to let out a grasp while Granny's lower jaw fell so low that Applejack thought her dentures might have fallen out. The room just it just went silent with no pony able to draw breath. Finally, Bright Mac cleared his throat. At any rate, when we found it, there was a hatch open and he was there lying inside of it. And you both know how protective your ma can be. Finally, Applejack found the will to speak again. Well, where's the rocket now, Pa? It's out in the barn right now, and that's where it's gonna stay, he answered. I... I think it's best for now that we keep this a family secret until we decide what to do with it. In the meantime, I think we should get back on the subject. Applejack's gaze drew back to the colt quietly napping in the crib. Your mother and I talked over it last night, and we've decided that in the light of these strange circumstances, we're going to adopt him. Mac... Are y'all sure about this? Granny said, climbing out of her rocker. Pear's already eight months old. You really think you're capable of taking on two young'uns at the same time? Bright Mac scratched his head with his hoof. Well, it wasn't my idea, Ma, honest. I tried talking her out of it, but you know how stubborn she'd get- OW! Bright Mac winced as Pear Butter flicked his wrist with her hoof. I'm grateful that you're thinking of me in my time of great need. She said with a smile. Really? I am, but my mind's already made up, and there ain't nothing either you can say or do to convince me otherwise. Granny Smith cracked a smile. Sounds like she got you whipped pretty good. Bright Mac could only look up at her and scratch his neck. Yeah, looks like it, he said. Bright Mac held back a chuckle at her husband's humility. It'll be alright, dear. We'll get through it somehow. We always do. So... Um, what are we gonna call him? 
the apples looked over to their daughter, peering over the bars of the crib. In all of the excitements, they had never really given it much thought. Bright Mac looked down at his daughter, who was gazing up at him. I guess we haven't figured that one out yet, Sugar Cube. Bright Mac grunted as he took off his hat. There wasn't any letter or name tag when we found him. Huh. He turned his head upside down and a small golden diamond-shaped pendant fell into his hoof. All he was wearing was this when we found him. Applejack gazed at the pendant, eyes wide in wonder as she watched the light dance off the shooting star in the center. Comet! Excuse me, dear? Pear Butter asked, looking down at her. Well, I, I was just thinking that might be his name, on the count that, well, it's on the pendant. Applejack said as she held it up to her mother's face. Hmm. Well, I must admit it does suit him in a way. Pear Butter said as she looked inside the crib. The foal slowly opened his eyes and looked around. Comet? Who would have ever heard an apple named Comet? Granny Smith suddenly spoke out. Applejack's ears perked up as a bright idea passed through her head. Well, what about Apple Comet Granny? She suggested. It's got apple in it, and it sort of suits him since he's from space. Or, or something. Granny Smith looked down sternly at her granddaughter. Applejack, she said. I don't think that's a good name for him. Applejack's ears drooped down as she looked down at the floor. Suddenly, a wide smile crossed Granny Smith's face. I think it's a great name for him! She exclaimed. Applejack couldn't help but smile and grabbed her grandmother's foreleg, while Bright Mac, Pear Butter, and Big Mac looked on proudly. Apple Comet, huh? I like it, Bright Mac said. It's a little unusual, but I gotta admit, I like how it rolls off the tongue. I think that it's just... it's perfect for him, darling, Pear Butter said. Applejack turned to her older brother, who was leaning over the arm of the couch to get a better look over the rest of the family. What do you think, Big Mac? She asked him. Yep, he answered simply. Well, then it's all settled, Pear Butter exclaimed. Welcome to the family, Apple Comet. A yawn escaped from the young foal's muzzle as he stretched his legs out to stand up. Hi there, little fella, Pear Butter cooed. Apple Comet looked up at her puzzled. I'm your mother, and this is your pa, and your big siblings, Big Macintosh and Applejack. Hi there, partner. Nice to meet you. Applejack said as she reached down to rub his cheek with her hoof. Yup. And this here's gonna be your baby sister real soon, Pear Butter said, pointing to her large round barrel. She's sleeping right now, but I promise you'll be seeing her in a few more months. I bet you're hungry as a billy goat after all you've been through. She leaned down into the crib and picked up Apple Comet up by the scruff of his neck. Let's get y'all changed up and fed, and after breakfast, I'll give y'all a good burping. Can we see the rocket now, Pa? Applejack asked, turning back to her father. We'll... we'll talk about it after breakfast, Sugar Cube. If y'all both get your chores done this morning, then maybe I'll let you take a peek at it. Race ya! Applejack called out as she dashed for the kitchen, her brother fast in hot pursuit. Pear Butter beamed down at her now three children with pride. Huh. It seems just like yesterday I was nursing him for the first time. She said, wiping a tear from her eyes. Pretty soon. We're gonna have four of them. Uh, they're growing up so fast. Bright Mac looked down at his wife, who barely came up to her shoulder as she set the newest addition to their family on the floor to change him. She was positively radiant with the beauty of budding motherhood. Yep, they sure are, darling. They sure are. Despite his earlier reservations about adopting the abandoned foal while they were already expecting another child, Bright Mac could not help but beam with pride at his wife as she finished changing and dressing their newest addition. There, all done. Pear Butter smiled as she set the dirty diaper next to her husband. Y'all mind getting rid of that for me? I think someone's a little hungry. She laid down onto the floor and nudged Apple Comet next to her teats. Bright Mac watched as the tiny colt sniffed at the sweet scent of her milk and slowly began to drink. Sure thing, dear, he said before picking up the dirty diaper and tossing it into the bin. He wasn't ashamed to admit it. He was wrong. The boy was going to make a fine addition to the Apple family and a great sibling for the rest of the youngins. 
four months later. Pear Butter let out a shriek as she felt another contraction. Move aside, this is an emergency! Nurses and orderlies stood aside as the doctors rushed Pear Butter into the operating room. Her worst nightmare was coming true. Fifteen minutes had passed since her contractions began, and her cervix had only dilated by seven centimeters. Downstairs in the waiting area, the rest of the Apple family sat and waited for the inevitable news. Big Macintosh and Applejack huddled close to their father as they wondered if their mother was going to be okay. It's... it's gonna be okay, isn't, isn't it, Pa? Applejack asked her father. Her eyes were moistened with tears as she looked up at him. The towering stallion could only sigh and look down the hall where his wife had just been taken. I don't know, Sugar Cube, he answered. I just don't know. Well, what do you mean you don't know, Pa? The doctor's supposed to make ponies better, ain't he? He's gonna make Ma all better and the baby too. Please, Pa, tell me Ma's gonna be okay. Sugar Cube, y'all just need to calm down. It ain't... It ain't gonna get you any good to get worked up. Applejack sniffled and wiped her eyes. I need you to listen to me, alright? Are you listening? The orange filly took a deep breath and nodded. Good girl. Now listen, I want you to promise me that no matter what happens with your ma and your sister, that y'all be strong for us. Okay, Sugar Cube? Applejack sniffled and swallowed as she looked up at her father. A swipe of her hoof and the sadness was wiped away from her eyes, replaced by a stoic look of determination. Ah, I, I, I promise, Pa. Right Mac looked down at his daughter's face. The worried, scared filly was gone, and in her place was a strong, confident mare. She gets that from her mother, no doubt, he thought as he looked back down the hall to the operating room. I just wish that I could share even one ounce of her innocence right now. The doctors had warned Pear Butter after she found out that she was pregnant that her last two births had left her at a high risk for complications. Bright Mac especially, as well as Applejack, had both been born larger than normal foals, and the doctor had advised her against giving birth to this one. She'd refused to abort, but had agreed to do a cesarean in the event something went wrong. Bright Mac could only blame himself. <sighs> they get it from my side of the family, after all. He thought as remembering how his mother had to have him delivered by a cesarean. She'd swallow her pride after that, and decided one foal was enough after him. He looked over at his mother who was holding Apple Comet in her arms, while Big Mac laid his head in her lap. The tiny foal was content to squirm and wriggle in Granny Smith's arms, while the young colts just laid there, his eyes filled with dread and uncertainty. It was as if he knew what was wrong with his mother and what was likely going to happen to her. It was a feeling his father shared. Pear Butter's heartbeat echoed from the EKG monitor, the rhythm increasing steadily as the analgesic spell began to take effect. Her coat was coated in sweat from hours of attempting to deliver, but with no success. You're doing great, Pear Butter. I just need you to stay calm and let us do the rest. A nurse said to her. Pear Butter's vision began to blur from the painkiller spell as the surgeons gathered around her. Is everything ready? The head surgeon, a unicorn with a scalpel for a cutie mark, asked. Yes, Dr. Scalpel, his assistant answered. She's been sedated, but we don't have much time. Pear Butter watched as Dr. Scalpel made the first incision into her stomach. The analgesic spell meant she couldn't feel anything. She could only look on as the doctor cut her stomach open, like a side of beef. I see the head! One of the surgeons cried out as Dr. Scalpel reached inside of her and slowly pulled out a tiny figure of a little filly. A soft wailing filled the room as the newborn filly took in her first breaths.